Hi, I'm Aaron Holstein, otherwise known as Vibe Squad, and I have a new musical project called Backpacked. I'm an Ableton certified trainer, and I have a new sample pack called Boom Bap Breaks Volume 2. This pack of audio loops will work with any digital audio workstation, but I'm gonna show you some cool ways to utilize breakbeats in Ableton Live. Come check it out. Once you've downloaded the zip file and unzipped it to your sample library, then the next move, if you're using Ableton Live, I would consider adding them to places down here on the bottom of the browser. To do that, you can just click Add Folder, which will open up your browser and navigate to the folder where you put those samples. In my case, it's inside of my Samples and Loops Mega folder. And I've got Vibe Squad Labs Boom Bap Breaks Volume 2, the whole folder here. Cool, so I added that to my places. And when I click on it, we get the whole thing, 500 loops. And the way that they are named is by tempo first, length, type, and then some numbering system for me as I'm going through so I make sure I get to 500. If you sort by name, you're going to get tempo from slow to fast. If you click it again, you'll get fast to slow. So that's a cool way to sort through this stuff. You have basically uh, beats, hats, perk, and some fills. So one way to minimize the searching is if you know you want to look for hats, you could type in hats in the search bar and you're just going to get the loops that have just the hi-hat loops. If you search perk, for instance, you'll get just the perk stuff, percussion. And if you type fill, you'll get the drum fills. Cool. If you type in beat, you'll get the just beats. All right. So those are ways to sort. Um, an interesting way that I like to sort sometimes is over here, if you right click where it says type, typically, uh, or date modified, you could you could select by date. But what I was thinking would be handy is selecting by rank. And what rank will do is it will tell you how many times you've used the sample compared to others in this folder. So if I want to see what I've used the most, it's this. It probably landed in a couple of productions and some lessons and stuff like that. If I want to find something that I haven't used at all, I can go down to the bottom of rank where there is no ranking. And the, these ones I've never used before. So that's a handy thing. Let's put it by type. They're all waves, but that is a basic, you know, in case this was full of presets and waves, that'd be a way to not have to look at the stuff that doesn't pertain. All right. So there's just a ton in here. Um, and they range from 70 BPM all the way up to 170 and as you may know, um, a lot of these tempos are double time or half time. So 160 relates to 80. And in some of the cases, the way that I named these, you might hear these 80 BPM beats as 160. It depends what you're working on. And some of them are kind of doubled up. But for the most part, I tried to give them the best BPM naming that would be the most helpful for you. So on channel one here, I've got some beats. This one has been re recorded at 90 BPM, but I'm playing it back at 86 BPM because it's been warped by Ableton Live and warping maps the timing 
my timing in some cases is a little sloppy. Like there's the grid and there's my hi-hat. That's what creates the groove, whether these in-between hits are slightly off the grid, forward or back, and in what combination. And that's what I've tried to capture in this sample pack. Let's listen to a couple more. So you get the idea, they're pretty all over the place, but it's the same kit, it's all me playing in my basement studio here. One cool thing that you can do with loops in the sample window down at the bottom via the warp dialog here, is you can pitch transpose these uh, hits. We're in beats mode at our native tempo to the sample. And there's um, some choices here, preserving transients. That means do you does it preserve every attack versus chop it into exact 16th notes? So we're going to leave it on transient preserve. Um, but here's something interesting is that to fill space, so if you stretch it a little too fast for itself, or slow it down, in this case, we're, we're at 86 BPM, and this beat is 90 BPM. So when it gets slowed down, it has to do something with that extra time. And in this case, it reverses the sound and plays it a little bit backwards at the end. So if you listen, you can sort of hear that, especially when I transpose it a bit. It needs to do something with that last bit of time that didn't exist before. So one thing that I like to do is change it to this arrow that goes to a line here. It stops. And this is the transient loop mode set to off. I can now go over to this number here, which is called the transient envelope. And that's the duration of the volume fade to the end of each transient hit. So to illustrate, if I shorten it down to, to nothing, we get this. Just the attack, just the transient. It takes away the room or the ambience. It takes away my basement and the drum shell and the aftermath of once you've hit a percussion instrument completely. So you can do some interesting things with transposing then and just take things to a pretty cool place without bringing along the room ambience of the recording that you're working with. So that's a something I do a lot. Um, that's zero envelope. So how about just a little bit less? Or how about 100%? Which sounds different than if it does the reverse, which is the default. It's a little smoother at 100%. So if you're playing it at its own tempo, and but you want it warped to fit the, the project so that you can change the global tempo to whatever you want, um, you will want to maybe consider this forward back. Now, if I stretch this much slower, we'll really hear what it's trying to do with loop forward. And we get the attack of the hit again. It goes t t t when the hi-hat hits. So loop forward is not going to be as useful as loop reverse. It still creates something 
that sounds unnatural when you really slow it down. Um, if you get closer to the native tempo, then you don't hear those artifacts as much. You could do that on purpose as a creative choice. Like in the case of this 138 BPM. So if I want to do some interesting stuff to this one, shorten the envelope and pitch it up. So that's a that's a fun thing to play with in the warp category here is the transient loop mode and the envelope. Here we've got some of the percussion loops. It's very easy to transpose them. You can apply some of those same envelope tricks to get a much different much different thing here hit reverse <laughs> put those transients back the fun thing about loops and specifically breakbeat loops is less about using them literally you know which I would call just dropping them in as they come and layering them up but finding creative ways to re imagine them to change the pitch, to change the envelope of every hit, to maybe rearrange them. So let's try some of that type of stuff here. All right, so one really cool thing that you can do to a breakbeat loop is convert drums to new MIDI track. And Live puts together its best guess rhythmically and adds uh, in this case the 606 kit let's see how it sounds so in this case it looks like it thinks my kicks are these snares there we go so that was a real example of the type of editing I might have to do to a file if I do drums to MIDI, which is a cool, it's a cool feature for sure. Um, another thing that you can do is slice to new MIDI track. That's one of my favorite things to do. And that does something different. So that creates a MIDI clip that represents each slice hit. In this case, we can hear them. Um, and when you play that whole clip, it's really close to the original. Let's get the transposed zero here. But this is individual drum hits in a drum rack, and that's an automatic thing that can be put together for you. What, what that is doing is it's putting each slice in a simpler of its own and onto a drum pad. These drum pads can be triggered from any MIDI controller. It's a cool way of rewriting the beat. I'm just playing the hits on my keyboard. So I'm just playing, replaying the beat. So 
So you can make yourself a new clip, entirely new clip, um, reimagining this drum beat. Right? And if those clicky sounds are bugging you like they're bugging me, so that little bit is what we're hearing is a is the hit looping. So you can very easily take care of that by turning the loop length to zero, which turns it off in the macro. In this case, it's a little bit of the tail. There we go. So you can go clean them all up. And have at it. Another thing that you can do is create a new MIDI track. Control Shift T. On this MIDI track, when we select the header here, it says drop instrument or sample here. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to take this whole loop and drop that in here. And it creates a simpler with my entire. Okay, so if I hold a key down, which I'm still holding it, it plays through once, that's it. So I will turn on loop, in this case I want loop on. Now when I'm holding down my key, it's gonna loop, as you'd hope. I'd be nervous if I turned on loop and it didn't loop. So that's one way to, to take care of business here. If I play a different key, in this case, it's going to just pitch that loop up, which in turn speeds it up. It's like speeding up a record or slowing it down. So that's classic mode with the loop on and the warp off. So if I want to turn the warp on, now it's got beats mode, just like a warped clip. Now it's gonna map the timing. So if I were to choose a different key, it's gonna keep the timing the same. It's gonna keep us in the same tempo. So you can then freely pitch the loop without affecting time. It's because we're in beats mode down here, and that's what beats mode lets us do. We've got some of the same transient control that we learned a couple tips ago. So they all don't have to be full length. All right, so that is how you can make a loop and pitch it and play it along with your project. So in this case, let's play it along with uh, one of these other clips. Similar to the way that we right clicked on a clip and said slice to new MIDI track, there's a way to treat the loop inside of Simpler as a sliced up MIDI instrument. And that is by selecting slice mode on the left side here. And that does a nice job of guessing where each hit is. You may want to come on in here and customize this by dragging, by using your magnifying glass above the number in the black space here, right by the number. And as you come down, it turns into a cursor. And so uh, hover your mouse a little bit over this area and you'll kind of see how it interacts. So you could go in and customize these manually. That's cool. Or you could just adjust the sensitivity. Sometimes that's all it takes. If it, let's say it gives you too many hits, that's not our problem with this beat. But you can adjust the sensitivity to get a better automatic guess and then go in 
figuring out where you want the exact hits. That does the same thing where it will distribute those hits across the keyboard. Again, if you want to get rid of some of that clicking sound, you can come over here to that envelope. Oops, put it in, make sure you put it in forward mode, right? And then check and see up up. Also allowing you to rearrange. however you'd like. So that is slice mode inside of simpler. One of my favorite things to do with breakbeats is to hand edit them. So I would come down to this loop here in arrangement view and on the timeline here I could do a lot with just chopping up this beat, I'm going to hit letter R on my keyboard, and that automatically reverses this one hit. Yeah. To get rid of the little popping, clicking noise, you go in there and look for her. Here it was. I'll bring it back. That thing here. So we were just trying to get one, one trick is to bring the um, left and right sides together in a crossfade, but you got to watch out that you don't include any of the sound you're trying to cut out. In this case, you have to play around with the the crossfade position, or the crossfade points. But now it's just a pretty transparent that you just kind of fade together, and you can't hear that click. Well, yes, I can. So if the crossfade fails, right, it's just too much sound there. You could just manually really fade it and use some silence there instead. Like, we won't hear it if it's really not there. There we go. So let me put my loop brace. I'm just going to duplicate the kick hat here to superimpose it over where it goes snare hat instead. It's going to go kick twice. So yeah, let's turn this around backwards, just because we're crazy. Get a little crossfade going here, or maybe just to get rid of the stuff that's going to give us some trouble. Cool, and let's say we just love that. Um, it's really easy to select all. And you have a couple options here. You can consolidate. That, that puts it all together into one file. That's probably the easiest. That just consolidates the edits. I'm going to Command Z, or excuse me, Control Z, because I'm on my PC. Command Z on Mac. Um, maybe I want to include some effects like drum bus, which is an easy one to make drums sound really awesome. Maybe on this drum bus, I'm going to add in some boom to that kick.
So well, maybe I want to keep that um, in the sound. And maybe I want to add reverb. Let's get really crazy. Add some reverb. If I want all of those things to consolidate, then I cannot choose just the consolidate edit selection here. That won't do it for me. What I should do instead is go to the track header, right click and say freeze. Freeze will basically make a ghost audio recording in the background and then show you, although it's grayed out, you can't edit it anymore, what you were working with. This is a handy spot if you want to share your file with someone else and you maybe want them to give it back to you so you can unfreeze it and work on it again because from the frozen state you can just go unfreeze track and you're back to the way it was with edits and all. If you go freeze and then click flatten which is the second step of this process that actually saves all of your effect information. It gives you these little kind of ghost edit points where you can see how the whole thing was edited and you can use those if you want or you can take any of the portions of this clip that have been chopped into these edit parts to show you where you had edited it and you can just drag it out where it does not have those edits but it does have reverb and the drum bus effect of applied. That's fully destructive. You can't right click and like undo that. Um, you could undo it only one level. So I've already resized it. It's already too late for me to use a, a, an undo from the project level. So that's why you may want to way to freeze and flatten or you may want to flatten right away because that's going to commit your edits and your effects to the clip. So one of my personal mottos is just customize everything. So you bring in a loop from the Boom Bap Breaks Volume 2 sample pack from the browser. I'm just going to guess and throw one in there. I'm going to mute this previous one. And I'm going to press play and do some manipulation right within the sample clip control area here. Warp and transpose are my go-to. Turn it down a little. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. Please check out the sample pack, Boom Bap Breaks Volume 2. The link is down in the description. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. <laughs>